Good morning, YouTube. And when I say good morning, I mean it today. What time we got here, Walker? Oh, uh, we're looking at well, a little later departure than we anticipated. Uh, 54. Yeah. That's 54. 4. Oh, Jesus Christ. I showed you how early it is. So, anyways, um, today we are driving four and a half hours down South Albany, uh, Poughkeepsie area, to go get a. What year is this thing? Like a 73? Yeah, it's early 70s. Early 70s cat. 983B track loader, track excavator, uh, running. Uh, so our story we've been told is this guy bought this thing out of some demolition company in New York City. And they dropped it off on a one and a half acre lot. And it sat there ever since. He did a little bit of land clearing with it. And then uh, it's been sitting the past four years and he wants to get it running, wants to get a couple stumps moved with it. So we're off to go do that. Uh, he's a family friend. So, you know, we're definitely gonna help out, but neither one of us have ever done anything like this. Yeah, we're a little out of our wheelhouse here, but we're gonna get her figured out. Yeah. So, truck's loaded up, a bunch of tools, and uh, only <laughs> down to less than a quarter of a tank. I got 128 miles. So, we're gonna need some fuel here shortly, but uh, we're gonna get down the road here a ways and go get this thing go going. So, sit back and enjoy the ride. <laughs> I think I'll give it a go, sure. Yeah, I hope I can get up that fucking early two days in a row. Holy hell, dude, there it is. All right. Big old girl. All right, dude, I'll talk to you. Well, it's not small. No. Hey. John, can I drive right okay, in there? Yeah, I've, I've actually been driving this thing up there. Oh, Jesus. Well, if a Malibu, you make, be able to. If Malibu makes it, I better make it, huh? I'll back right up here. Try not to hit that tree, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. YouTube video? Yeah. <laughs> So we were talking about this. We were talking about this on the way down. Mm -hmm. If we needed to repack one of these cylinders, I don't think any of our tractors would lift those. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I want to get a guy. Uh, they, they, they made a hoist, but it's a little down. But road. unless I'd there's like a to tool kit, we can't even check them final drives. What are you looking at? So oh yeah, yeah. Unless it's got no three tool kit stuff. That what do you mean? That's Walker. That's a that's three quarter inch. Uh, I I half inch or three quarter square drive. Pipe and stuff. I... Oh, that's a good sign. Walker. That's rather half or three quarter square ratchet drive. That's, we can we can open the final drives. No to do big that, deal. If you're even thinking of that, I'll start spraying it now. 
Oh yeah, there she is. Camera just doesn't do it justice, man. You see this? I'm not sure what the heck that is. That might be part of the reason why the one brake doesn't work. But that's old, 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 old stuff. Yeah, that's but when I ran it, you can see it's there's fresh stuff on top of it too. Okay. Um, that's bigger than anything we'll get into today. Want to come from the top down? I'm wondering what's that's in there, where, John. Where the hydraulic pump? That's the hydraulic feed foot fill, right? Yeah. yeah. That's your hydro oil, okay? Yeah. So you have a hydraulic fluid leak. Well, you two. I think you have two different hydraulic systems. I think one. <clears throat> I think one for the braking and one for well, underneath the seat is some so, type of fill also. So he was looking it up and then it looks like it's got it takes like 40 gallons of hydraulic oil for the transmission, right? Yeah. And then it's got another nine, 8 or 9 gallons just in each final drive. So the final drives would have their own um well, I don't know, a he'll need underneath the seat as well that, I, that might be final drives that I'm okay. not, I I I kind of located that the other day. I didn't even know it was there. And that's got the same type of uh plug on it but it's small it's smaller it might yeah be just like one inch or three quarters inch. Well, let me access some well look at the size of the cylinder <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i mean the radiator fan not small the air cleaner <laughs> Yep. Make sure we don't have rodents in there. <clears throat> you know, he was oh, looking it up. Walker was looking that up on the way down. That cat engine that's in this weighs 4,800 pounds. So it weighs as much as my pickup truck. Yeah. My entire truck. <laughs> I would have thought it'd be more than that. What, what are you looking at, Pete? The engine itself weighs 4,881 pounds or something oh, like Hang that. on, we got a dipstick right here. What's this one? That's engine oil. That's engine oil. That's going to be longer than the fucking trail of tears. But, I'm going to read it. Yeah. Safe starting range with engine stop and oil cold. And that's... We were <laughs> warm we were literally, literally engine running with way. warm oil. Doing 80 miles an hour with this on the back. Or mint. Okay. I'm in the front seat. Right there. Yeah. Does it smell all right? <laughs> I hope he doesn't have to put the brakes on anytime soon. I mean, it's not crazy <coughs> thin. Okay. So I don't think it's diluted with hydraulic oil. That's a. Or water. That's a dipstick, boy. Oil level is good though. Yep, yep, it's yep. it's good in black. Which it would be. Well, no, that's a yeah, that's a good thing. In this sense. Okay, yeah, because there's our engine fill. Now what is that shut off down there? Might be some sort or something like that. I didn't get the table set up and I'm doing checks already. So belts are on it. I got gloves too. I got gloves if anybody needs. Think we came here and mess around? <laughs> turbo back in there. Okay. All right. Um, I think I'm gonna put my coat on. Yeah, I'm thinking the same hoodie. thing. We might need yeah, just a yeah. hammer or something or pliers to grab that pin. Yeah. Even though I got a on Yeah. Well, let's get tools open in the bed in the bed of my truck and. We'll uh, start digging into this. The only other thing is I want to check everything over for pine straw and stuff down in there and make sure we don't get a fire going. Yeah. Yep. Because that is fire extinguisher is not one of the tools we draw. No, there's one in there. There's one in there. We can get to the point where we fire it up just, just in case any batteries in here. When you, when you drop the seat forward, I did notice there's a lot of little oil in there. And I've seen some videos where these freaking things get cooked. Yep. <coughs> cool. Walker, would you be able to put this thing to work? Or is it too big for you? What, at our house? 
Never too big, man. No, no. Well, the problem is, is no. It's he's got 66 it's acres. He could run this. Inch wide track pad, and I'm on like a spring. Oh, so it's a little loose. The soil's loose. Yeah. Hey, if you find a wet spot. Yeah, wham out. You're gonna. I don't know anybody that has something that can pull, pull this, this out. out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know what's good about this compared to a dozer? At least you can curl the bucket and try to push yourself out a little bit. You know. You don't think the Ghostbusters would get you out? What's that? You're gonna need some leverage on there. All right, well, I got like an inch and an eighth. Uh -huh. Open and wrench. We can use that. Is that what we want to do first? Just go around and do a fluid check on everything? Before well, apparently we. Apparently, it's designed to just drag the fucking finals on the ground, apparently. That's just what it does. Oh yeah, look at the skid plate on that, huh? That's amazing. Dude, that counterweight alone. That's just awesome. It's an impressive machine. I mean, there's not a bit of hardware on this that's smaller than an inch. But to be fair, when you sit <laughs> in it, it feels small. Yeah, I can see that. Like, there isn't much hood or anything. Right. And yeah, no, I can see that. Aside from your height, you know, obviously you're high off the ground, but... Well, the hood is pretty narrow and stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, well, hang on. Put the wrench on here. Sure, what's been in more Harbor Freight Breaker bar? You know what? I think that oil level's good. <laughs> well, is that just to check them or is that to fill them? Well, that's to fill them. <clears throat> okay. Is there a dipstick for the final drives? No, you just it should be level with that, just like okay. a rear diff or whatever. Yep. Looks um, like we've lost some hydraulic oil. Over well, here. yeah, that's what we were talking about when you were in the cab. I think it's coming from up here. So let's pull this panel off. All right. Well, this here's the tank right here. Right. There's a sight glass on there. You see anything in there? No, it's all mildew and shit. Here, you want the big old Milwaukee light? Glasses up here, so yeah, so needs... it's probably at least five, maybe ten gallons yeah, low. Probably ten gallons low. Okay. All right. Should we? You think we ought to pull that panel off? It's only got. Here, I, if I was a betting man, it's missing a lot of hardware. Here. It's only got one bolt here and a few on the side. All right. Let me grab uh, half inch sockets and the half inch impact. And... Yeah, I can't say I've ever seen a radiator cap Coolant's that big. An inch or two low. Oh shit, okay. So that's good. Yeah, but an inch or two is still like three gallons.
But to be fair, that's been there for my lifetime. Yeah, and mine so. combined. Okay, that's not even grease anymore. That's turning back into a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get that in them big jobs. So, is this a feed line to the hydraulics? That's like four inch. Yeah. Very well could be. Right? You know what I mean? That's a serious question. <laughs> okay, so listen. That tank's not as deep as I thought. So if the hydraulic level is down here, it really doesn't have a ton in it. Yeah. So, and when you think of what it takes to fill one of these <clears throat> cylinders, right? We really do need to go get probably two five gallon pails. That one works better on the other side, but I got a little five to four foot right there. Is that fresh? That can that's over there? Yeah. That was under there? Okay, that's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. huh. uh, probably need 10 gallons. It's got, so it's got two sight glasses. And okay, I I'm, see that. Yep. I, I shine the light in there. Yeah. Judging by the length of that tube, yep. our hydraulic oil level is probably somewhere in this neck of the woods. Two ten gallons, got it. No, uh, just two five gallon pails. <clears> two five gallons, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just to do it in ten bucks. Did you get that one? That runs away. I feel like that, that turbo <laughs> would consume a beach towel like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> keep right on running. Keep right on running. Yeah. Boy, instead of Carhartt coveralls. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Like Carhartt coveralls or something? Yeah, maybe. Well, I got a clipboard type thing. I, I know the one one guy online said, that's why I always keep clipboards in the bottom. Oh Jesus, it broke free, holy hell. Whew. What's up? I got it. Holy shit, this pry bar was bent right over like a wet noodle, but it just broke free. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I probably have a, it did come, come open. Hell huh? yeah, dude. Here, let me scrape uh, all the knives off from it. I got, you want gloves? I got gloves. No, I just want to, sure? yeah, I just want to make sure. Well, my hands are cold, so I'm going to have to go to that fire here in a minute. Yeah. But. And grab, I got fresh new gloves over there. I'm just trying to scrape all the shit off around it so nothing falls in it. I broke it. The fuel is like three quarters because I was okay, working. Okay, so you checked it. I was working on topping it off. I did not check it today. There's no leak, and, and I literally had it like right up to there. Now, which brake doesn't work? I believe right. it's right track brake, you said? I believe it's the right track, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Hang on. Oh, oh, oh. got oil on it. <laughs> All right, that's uh, hydraulic fluid, you think? Well, it might uh, be gear oil, but the problem is, is, is why is it that full? I wonder if that comes from the tank above. Is that your four inch line? I don't know. With Next one transmission back. in neutral and no, this, I'm sorry, this is the battery. Okay. That's the battery. Um, but in between there. I've never seen that one off. I don't even know what that is. See that spot and see what it says below it? Full and then add three gallons. Some of them you gotta. Some of them, huh? Have to be while well, it's running too. Yeah, this that the stick size. <laughs> add uh, three gallons in neutral. <laughs> at engine at idle. But, okay. But see the difference between the low mark and the high mark on there. Yeah. At, yep. at the low mark it says add three gallons. And and which that's you're the gonna one have behind, to, behind the seat, right? Yeah, yep. you're gonna have to go back to work. Just to buy all the fluids for this thing. <laughs> this whole fixed income shit, man, it's gonna get old. Nah, I'm good, I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> I got it in 16. And do I you know. think it got COVID? Yeah. Hey, do you, well, John, do you want your seat back? Because it's, 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 it's right here. Before I started cleaning. All the mice started to really. 
I'm waiting for a dead mouse you know, to come out of here. The size oh, of this thing? My God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's where you, you found your, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's where your seat went to. Yeah. <laughs> it's tucked in there. So we got the battery. Uh, so that's going to be tray off here, cover off. That was probably a squirrel. That's bigger than a mouse. That was probably a squirrel. Yeah, I don't know, man. Well, we got to make sure that, that thing, this insulation should have been slid down there. Right, so, so it doesn't get so caught. I can actually see the back side of that. Which Inside, one? Though. Oh, of both of these? Yeah. Okay, here. Yep. Where's that door out of the way? Oh yeah, look at that. Okay. So which one's the ground? This top one is ground. Okay, so the big one right here. That that makes sense, right? Take a peek up in here, Clark. It looks like it's a ground cutoff switch. Back side of that switch is grounded to frame. Yeah. So that switch would cut the ground to shut the batteries off. Yep. And then the big guy. That would make sense. So that's what our transmission fill. Fill dipsticks on the left. Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, All right. So I guess it's time to get these batteries on. Let's get them hooked up. We'll see what kind of condition these terminals are in. I, the thing is, though, like, so this ground won't be that bad. So this right? is negative. Yeah. That's positive. <clears throat> but wherever this power goes to, if we have to replace that freaking thing, that thing could be an issue. An issue. That may go directly right to the lug on the starter. That was a button, man. Yeah, these terminals are yeah, looking pretty. That just head south. Pretty rough here. Shit. To be know. fair, that positive cable is probably only going straight to the positive lug on the battery. Long. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, that yeah, goes down right here, and then heads towards the front. Why do you able to get to that? Through this access. Yeah, Walker, it's right here. Yeah, running south there, right? Well, yeah, but it's the access through the floor. You can see it right there. I think it's like it's got to be like double lot though. Cost three grand to get this home. Yeah, it cost a thousand. I'll, to get I'll it bet you you could here. send Billy Bach and to go get this deal. thing on a quiet day. I don't think he's got a four axle low boy. Yeah, I don't know if they got a truck to do it. It, it. it all depends. Actually, on how big is that excavator they got? That's, is that a three? That's, that's eighty thousand pounds. Yeah, that's a three thirty. Yeah. The only thing is, is like the bridges and shit between here and there. They might have axle requirements of displacement of weight and shit. Yeah, yeah. You gotta pick your. You gotta pick your. Because we noticed a lot of freaking like dump trailer looking things on the way out here that were running tri axle trucks with four axles on the trailer. Looks like they'd be a son of a bitch to U turn in a parking lot because they were only like what fifty three foot trailers. Right? Oh, one of them was even shorter than that. Remember the one we got on in Utica? Yeah. That was a short trailer, four axles. I don't know what the freaking secret is to get the you know, air thing off. But... You just said well, you, I, you think it's closer to full. Four more, honestly. I'd grab four more. <laughs> with with how far two moves. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, <coughs> it, it is better than the I mean, I am not concerned in the least about the amount Four. of cool. Oh, it's right there. It's 
So just going from memory, there's something where one of the systems works, and it's, I think it's one of the hydraulic systems works on heat, heat and expansion. So until it's running for a little bit, it might be the braking. I can't remember. But one of them is like, he's like, you know, run it for a little while, it's got to heat up, and then it will function better. I think it might have been the. So like a. Well, okay. So, so Johnny, the reason I I know a little bit about 24 volt, just like the slightest amount. I used to work in a machine shop, at, like right out of high school, and they had a 1950. Two, I think it was. Sicard Buddha, it was called, okay? What the heck is that? Sicard used to be a company in Watertown okay. that made snowblower trucks. Okay. For airports. And Ray Mullet bought that company. Yeah. The tire ba guy? Bannister. No. Bannister used to work for him when he was, like, right out of high school. So, anyways, this Buddha was a it was right-hand drive. It was a straight-six gas motor down the center that drove the... Truck. 16th wrench tube, please. Uh, that drove the truck. So it was four wheel drive, transfer case, three speed tranny, two speed transfer case, all this stuff, right? And then the guy on the left hand side drove the blower. In the back was a straight eight diesel. Oh my God. With a, an eight inch exhaust stack, right? Yep, yep. And it had a, the blower had a rather two or three speed transmission. And the drive shafts like snaked all the way through the truck to get down to the front. And uh, that across the back of that, it had series? four six volt batteries. Ooh, oh, okay. So you had two in series and two in parallel. So you had your amperage and your voltage to get up to 24 volts. Wow. Yeah, it was a monster. Uh, so the guy that I we used to work for, he used to run it in the 80s and 90s and shit. And he was telling me when they'd tune them up in the summer, they'd nose them down a boat launch. So, because they figure if they could throw water 150 feet, they'd throw snow 300 plus or whatever, you know? So, and the blower is like eight and a half, nine feet wide, five foot tall, with two augers with like teeth on them and shit. It was, it was a monster. It was pretty cool. So that's my only experience. Yeah, that's my only experience with 24 volts. It is amazing how things come back around. Yeah, exactly. It had it. I think it's a 69. I think it's a 69. You think this is a 1969? I think so. Yeah, good point. Good point. Good point. What's that? 69. construction workers back in 1970. Yeah, you're right. There were like close to 2,000 was made, and this is number 705. Uh, Alright, so right now we're just getting the access panels off the floor here, trying to make sure all the pedals and stuff are freed up. Um, like this brake is currently an issue. The seat says 70. So, and the throttle here also seems to be seized up. A little bit, so we gotta figure this out. Not, not again. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the new one. That's like 1976, I think they started. So there's a lot of adjustment at the pedal. Um, hey, Johnny, can you remember, were you ever pushing into anything when you held the right track brake? Or did those guys sold it to you? Both ways, right? He says no. One one track is fully operational. Oh, the good. other one needs to be heated up, and then the fluid expands. He said, and and it might have to be freed up. He said. I just broke off. 
But it was a, it was a sponge. It, it was a spongy yeah. pedal, and I would say it was worth this five works. to ten percent. So this part, that clevis is what seized up. The one pedal. Well, we only figured out why you had a tough time shutting it off. Yeah, uh, we're trying to get the throttle to function. Yes. And there's this part seized up on it. Okay. And the linkage just broke. Oh, lovely. Okay. But I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. If we can get it apart, there's more threads on it. Yeah. Um, you need a light or are you good? No, I got no, a light. No, we got light here. Okay. I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna get that club as a part. This is moving free and that shaft is moving free, so really that club is the only thing that's seized up. This itself is yeah, feel it. Because the whole rod down there moves. Alright, so the big issue we're running into right now. The throttle shaft that he's moving. Yeah. This clevis just broke off. Um, I was in the middle of moving our throttle lever back and forth, trying to free everything up, and come to find out the reason it wasn't moving was because so, that clevis so that is uh, froze solid. So we're gonna try to uh, get that freed up, but I don't want to pry on it, and put too much torque on the throttle shaft. So he's actually up uh, trying to see the throttle shaft going into the pump, make sure we're not gonna hurt anything on that side. And then uh I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get this thing unseized here. Um the the threaded piece, uh, I'm gonna call it a tube because it's exactly what it was, the linkage or whatever, is that is hollow. And uh it's a straight shot, so I'm wondering maybe if we can just replace it with a piece of threaded rod if I get this part. Get the threads out and then uh, see if we can match up the thread pitch. Alright, so we're getting this kind of freed up here a little bit. It's still pretty tough. Um, now I gotta try to spin that, get that pin broke free and spin. So the issue we're having right now is that the starter solenoid is not working. Um, we've got power to everything, and we've got power to our, our big lug here. Let's try to get this in closer. Alright, so we've got power from the battery to our big lug. I can jump our power across to this one, and the starter turns. Our grounds, block ground, all that stuff is good. Um, so, uh, and then when we hit power, for the start, we do get power on this red wire here. So we are getting power and ground to the solenoid. So Pierce solenoid could be set up from sitting. So I'm going to uh, see if I can't try to snake this thing out of here. Not really 100% sure how to do it with this uh, L. Again, it's real hard to see because it's trying to focus on this hydraulicals here, but. Um, there's an L-shaped, like steel plate, essentially here that's working yeah, as a yeah, as a bar just got stuck. to tie everything together. You broken hearted over that? So no, not at all. Uh, <laughs> trailer says, uh, "Hope you feel better." I said, "I feel fine." Uh, <laughs> all right, there's that. God. You know you're ready to retire when? Yeah, when you can talk like that. Right. Yeah, fine. Oh, keep Mason, talking. Mason, why don't you pull that? Gas contacts have definitely seen some better days, huh? Hmm. The way that's set like this would this would have to slide in, right? I don't know. I really have no idea how it works to be honest with you. Well we gonna figure it out. Needle nose voice. So I'm doing a real terrible job filming this because we're trying to get what we can done.
get what we can done on uh, the daylight that we have. Plus, we still got to drive four and a half hours home. But these contacts were pretty burnt here. Same thing on here. So I sanded all this down, and uh, we just clocked this plate kind of 90 degrees. So hopefully it grabs a hold of some fresh material here. And uh, I'm going to tighten the screw up, reassemble it quick. And I think we ought to try jumper and power from the battery. Quick. Or maybe just set it in here, you know what I mean? And ba-ting, 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 and we'll see if we hear it come out. Yeah. I don't know, just just a thought, but. So, that's our next up. All right, well, we're gonna try and try this here. We took the solenoid off and cleaned everything up and managed to drop some hardware, so now we've vice gripped stuff on, but uh, I'll see what we're Contact. Hey, solenoid is at least doing something now. Tap that starter. Huh? Tap that starter. Hang on. You got the battery unhooked? Yeah, it's on. No, no, no. Uh, unhook the battery. Or undo the battery. Uh, Alright, let me... Four point three. Okay, so drop just a touch when he kicked the yeah. power on. Right? Yeah. What's it go to right there? It's still going lower. 22, 22, 8, 22, 9, 22. Okay, you ready? 23. Yep. Crank it. Contact. Down to 17, down to 5 right now. 4. Oh. Shut 15. the battery off. Shut it off. Shut it off. I couldn't get it out. Oh, jeez. Yeah, weld the starter right, or the screwdriver right to the starter box. What if the Bendix is set up on it? Say yeah. it again. Oh, you think it's engaged already? Well, on it? I don't know, but what if? So the Bendix will free spin kind of on the front of the starter, right? Almost like a one-way clutch, if you will. So if if I wonder if that can be set up on it. Shit, I don't know if maybe not. Sense. Battery's There's, still off. Okay, good. Keep it that way. I just don't know how you're going to get a replacement starter in that little spot and put it in. Right. Uh, I'm going to say it's going to be a chore. I'm going to say that. All right. Battery on. Battery on. Okay. Crank it. Contact. Battery off. I'm gonna say off. Uh, I'm gonna need an excavator. From over. Yeah, how do those battery out. cables feel? Are they warm? No, not at all. Well, sorry to say, but I think we're gonna tuck our tail between our legs here and uh, call it a day on this. So. Originally, starter solenoid was not working at all. So we got that off, pulled it apart, cleaned and greased everything, put it back together, solenoid works now. If you jump her across the starter, not the solenoid, the starter spins free. But when you go to uh, actually crank it over, the Bendix comes out and the starter will not spin it over. And we don't know if it's because it's set up possibly. Um, I know it's an 891 cubic inch no. diesel, but uh, I can't, we can't get the fan to move at all. Um, I mean, it sounds silly, but the fan's got more leverage than most breaker bars. Um, so I guess uh, that's it for the day. We've got snow spitting, it's still a four hour drive home, a half hours, whatever. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it really sucks, but at the end of the day, we did get a lot of stuff done. I mean, solenoid is freed up, the starter does spin. Um, we got, uh, we went through, the whole thing is now greased. All the fluid levels are topped off and checked. And the other big thing, too, is the throttle is now working like it's supposed to. There. 
So those three here, and then our detent to, to kill it. So, uh, you know, we got all that stuff freed up. So again, not all the progress we wanted, but uh, things were better than they were, I guess. Well, what do you think? Disappointed as I am? Yeah. You know, we were close, but maybe we weren't. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, we could have a weak starter. Uh, we could also still have some sort of a wiring issue, right? Because even though we had 18 volts, whatever, 17 and a half at the battery cranking, I mean, you and I have almost zero experience with 24 volts so is that normal you know what i mean is that the normal amount of voltage drop and it probably is more voltage drop than you would have if it was actually turning the motor right yeah and there were two good healthy <sighs> batteries i mean they're brand new batteries yep terminals like, were all cleaned up everything yeah, was good I feel there like they were large <laughs> enough for the uh, task I, they had at hand. and i mean we we had enough amperage to weld my screwdriver to the starter lugs so i don't know i it's tough tough telling but I, you wouldn't think four years would be enough to get that motor to set up that's why i was asking to see if that bucket had holes in it or something but yeah. even the way the bottom of that exhaust and the muffler is rotted out i still can't imagine that would have held any water down through that stack but it is what it is you know i mean we came down gave it a valiant effort Got to see a really cool piece of construction history. And uh, I guess we're gonna go home and put some tools away. I'm gonna go to work. <laughs> You're probably gonna go to bed. I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> I'm gonna go to work. And uh, maybe someday there'll be a video in the future of this, that machine actually running and us getting a chance to drive it. We'll see. Um, you know, but unfortunately for right now, it, uh, it's not gonna happen today, that's for sure. Not at uh, 34 degrees. You know, you're now on dark. Yeah, I mean it's it's 4:11 at this point. It's it's gonna be dark here in less than an hour. So, but uh, thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys will uh, like, give the video a like. You know, if you enjoyed it, and uh, subscribe to the channel. All the subscribers have definitely been helping. And uh, tune into the next one. Thanks.